As the United States expanded between the 17th and 19th century, indigenous people were forced off lands they had inhabited for thousands of years. European settlers took land to establish farms. U.S. laws, such as the Dawes Act, stripped an estimated 364,000 square kilometers of tribal land. Many historians, anthropologists, and tribes have documented the trauma and impact of this forced relocation. To build on this body of work, researchers set out to quantify this land dispossession on a large scale and analyze its effects. The researchers used many different sources to map native land prior to the 19th century. A key one included a collection of maps published by the U.S. government, which showed ceded tribal land up until the late 1800s. They also explored data created by tribal sources. The researchers found that over 54 million square kilometers of land were held by native people. This is almost surely an underestimate. Gaps in the data don't mean indigenous people didn't reside on those lands. Today, tribes have far less recognized land an almost 99% reduction to what they occupied before the 19th century, including shared land practices between tribes. For many indigenous people, dispossession was complete. 43% of tribes don't have any federal or state-recognized land base. One challenge to this study was matching the names of historical and present-day tribes. Many nations today represent more than one group of people. The researchers found that forced migration moved several tribes far from their historical land. For example, the Modoc people originally lived in the Klamath Basin. Now, their reservation is in Oklahoma, 2,565 kilometers away. After creating these two datasets, the researchers explored how various attributes of present-day reservations compared to those of historical native land. Indigenous communities hold spiritual and cultural connections to land that cannot be quantified. But the researchers focused on factors they could measure, one being access to natural resources. Using U.S. energy data sets, they found that indigenous lands today are 24% less likely to sit over oil and gas reserves. This took away the opportunity for some Native people to profit in the extractive economy the United States established, although many tribes resist oil and gas-producing wells on their land. The researchers also evaluated whether currently recognized land was more vulnerable to climate change, using four different criteria. Extreme heat, long-term drought severity, annual precipitation, and the potential for wildfires. Today, about half of present-day tribal lands had an increase in days above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Although historical and current indigenous land show a similar risk for wildfires, several tribes face a significant risk today. Precipitation declined in present-day land, and there was some evidence of a greater risk for drought severity, particularly in the Oklahoma Tribal Statistical Area. The climate crisis has already impacted many tribes. Yupik villages in Alaska are grappling with sea level rise and sinking buildings, while the Navajo Nation struggles with a dwindling water supply. This study shows that these accounts are not isolated experiences. Many Native communities are more vulnerable to climate change. The researchers hope this study will help inform future policies that will heal these inequities.